Hi there, Steve Kaufman, and today I want to talk to you about starting a new language, Hebrew, and I'm going to talk a bit about the Hebrew alphabet because I can, because to me, learning languages is about listening and reading. So I want to be able to read the language. So my first task is to learn how to read. So I come uh, right up against the Hebrew alphabet. So I'm going to talk a bit about my experiences. First of all, why learn Hebrew? Um, you know, I'm going to be in Israel. Uh, initially, I had said that, uh, or I told myself, I'd just work on Greek because I thought it would be too tough to try and learn Hebrew between now and October. So I've been working on Greek for the last three months or so, and doing it, still doing it. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I was reminded, you know, I'm going to be in Israel. I won't be able to read anything. I don't like that feeling. And in fact, uh, you'll see that right after this video, I've tacked on another video that uh, Connor Klein did with me in Lviv, where I talk about when you travel, having the language is that fourth dimension. It adds so much to your visit. So even if I can get a little bit of a start in the Hebrew before going there, while maintaining my Greek, I want to try to do it. So I'm going to get started doing Hebrew. I announced it on August the 4th on Twitter. So the first thing I come across, of course, is the Hebrew alphabet. So I looked up on the internet and I found a website that had the Hebrew alphabet, so I printed that out. But I mean, it's very hard to try and learn an alphabet, alphabet by looking at lists. So um, I had also, when I bought my Greek living language, I'd also bought this um, living language Hebrew. But it's really not a good system, very helter-skelter. And, you know, they introduced some helter-skelter words and phrases and like on the very next page they say, let's practice the vocabulary you learned, match the Hebrew in the left column with the English equivalent on the right column. I can't even read the language, how am I supposed to do that? Why do these beginner books set you on to quizzes and tests and drills so quickly? Forget that. So, what I've been doing is I have been um, hitting these uh, mini stories of ours uh, at link. And, you know, how much can I really achieve? Because, I, I, you know, I, I just finished while doing the dishes on my iPod. I was listening to the latest uh, Vasha Svoboda podcast from Ukraine in Ukrainian. In another half hour, I have a discussion in Russian with Konstantin and we're going to talk about how we're going to evolve uh, lessons at Link, and uh, we played golf today, and then my wife wants me to sit there and watch this telenovela, La Esclava Blanca, and she likes me to sit there with her. So I like, I got no time. So if I get in an hour a day, I don't, half an hour a day with, and of course I can't listen like normally, I could be listening, but I can't listen to noise. I have to listen to something that I have read so, all of that leads us up to what I've been doing, uh, which is reading on, um, on Link here and using the uh, text-to-speech. Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet has some significant problems for a learner. And so, you know, these are the frustrations and difficulties that you face when you start in a language. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm sure Hebrew is not the most difficult language. I'm sure that, like, Chinese, you got to learn all the characters, like every language has its difficulties. And when you start out, the difficulties seem overwhelming. But I know from experience that in time, things improve, they don't get worse. So even though every day I try and read this and I listen to the text to speech and, and then the next day I try and read it and I, st I still can't really read it and it's frustrating, but I know that in time it'll get better. So, you know, Bechol. 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 I look at it, and of course, Bechol, the problem in Hebrew is that, um, you know, a lot of these letters like Bechol, Be can sometimes be V and sometimes it's B. You don't know. They have, in the Hebrew, it's funny, you know, aside from the fact that the Hebrew alphabet is different from anything I've seen, uh, although not as daunting to me as the Arabic script, because the Arabic script is so cursive and and, and it seems to change depending on where it's, whether it's at the beginning or the middle of the, or the end of a word. Uh, the Hebrew script is a little more straightforward. But you have letters that have can be pronounced in several ways. 
you have some letters that are not pronounced, but they look nice, but they're not, not pronounced. Uh, some letters that are pronounced differently in the middle of a word and then they're silent at the end of the word. You have a letter like there's something that looks like basically an I and it's pronounced V in some situations and U in other situations. And then there are no vowels. So you don't know if it's B, Bo, Ba. Uh, now they do have, uh, for non-native speakers, they put in these little microscopic dots that you can hardly see that are supposed to in some way give you a hint or tell you what the vowel is. I haven't gotten to learn those yet because it turns out these are only used for non-native speakers and they're not used for normal readers of the language. So if I'm in Israel and I want to be able to read what's going on, I won't get these little dots. So I better get used to this, you know, the writing system without the vowels. Uh, so those are just some, there are letters that there's different letters, you know, several letters that say that uh, are pronounced S, several letters that are pronounced T, as I say, no vowels. Some are pronounced differently depending on whether they show up, uh, where they show up. So it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, it's a challenge, let's say. So what I do is, you know, I listen to it. Okay. Humechin. Ro ha buker. Ahu ah. See, here it is pronounced. Ahu ha buker. He's making breakfast. So, every day I read a little. I read a little, and uh, I'm not yet at the point where I could uh, take, because this is recorded. You know, I could listen to the human voice reading this, but I don't understand a thing. So I'm kind of stuck still trying to learn to read and I'm just going to read every day. I just read. I'm patient. It's so important to be patient. I know that if I read every day and then I listen to the text of speech for each word and each phrase, eventually it's going to get clearer. I already am able to read better than I was two, three days ago. So it's just a question of putting in the time. Uh, and then eventually I'll get to where I can actually listen to and understand the story when I'm away from the iPad. Then I can listen in my car and that's going to all help to sort of drive the language into my brain. So I'll just continue doing it. Uh, I should say that I received, uh, first of all, so I'm going to tack on as a separate video, the video that Conrad Klein did with, with me in Ukraine. Also, I have a video of Judith Meyer speaking Hebrew. She is one of the originators of the Polyglot, Polyglot Conferences. And remember, I, I attended this Polyglot gathering in um, Bratislava. And Judith put out a video of herself speaking Hebrew after 90 days. And she is tremendous. I was just blown away. So. I don't think I will achieve the level that she achieved. I just don't think I have the time to put in and for whatever reason, I don't know where I'm gonna get. Let's put it this way, I shouldn't say I won't. I'm unlikely, in my opinion, I'm, I'm resigned to the fact that I won't achieve what she achieved. But it's, in, it's tremendously inspiring to see what she was able to achieve. And that represents a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. So if I can progress at least some of the way towards what she achieved, I will be very happy. So I think it's, it's, I guess the lesson in all of this is when we start into a language, we're discovering it. There are no shortcuts. Yeah, we can look up a grammar thing or we can look up something else or, you know, go to sort of a collection of greetings if all of a sudden we have to greet someone and say, how are you? Uh, but really it's a gradual process of discovering the language. It takes time and we need to be patient, but we also need to be convinced that we will eventually achieve a meaningful level, a satisfactory level in that language, whatever that level happens to be. And in that regard, I'm thankful to Judith uh, who sent me the video and I'm gonna leave a link to that video in the description box. So there you have it, Hebrew alphabet, my sort of breaking my teeth on starting into Hebrew. Thank you for listening, bye for now.